I've been asked to talk about a news item that some people might feel is positive discrimination, sometimes referred to as reverse discrimination. A simple example of this might be where a candidate is employed, not because they are the most suitable candidate for the job. In fact, when they're not the most suitable candidate for the job, but they're only chosen and they are only employed because of one specific protected characteristic. That's what I'm talking about in this video. So welcome back to the channel. So somebody sent me a uh, news item on exactly this subject, but let's talk a little bit first of all about what those protected characteristics are. So moving to that slide first of all, let's look into the Equality Act. And the protected characteristics are fairly broad. They uh, include age, disability, gender reassignment, marriage and civil partnership, pregnancy, maternity, race, religion, belief, sex or sexual orientation. Now. Traditionally, any form of discrimination based on one of those protected characteristics is deemed to be unlawful. There are certain exceptions, and those are typically where it is justified and a legitimate aim. And these are specifically uh, described within the Equality Act. So in other words, if something is done uh, with a legitimate aim that may have some uh, detrimental effect on someone with a protected characteristic that may be lawful depending on the circumstances. Now the article in question was this one here. It was the, a press release um, about the launch of an incentive to attract a more diverse teaching workforce. Now fundamentally of course I support uh, the drive for a diverse uh, workforce in every sector and uh, this obviously has positive aims in mind so please bear that in mind throughout this video. Now this is referring to the Ethnic Minority Incentive Scheme providing up to £5,000 to eligible individuals to ensure the education workforce reflects Wales's diversity. A total of £5,000 available to eligible black, Asian or minority ethnic student teachers, £2,500 of which as an award for a qualified teacher status and a final payment of £2,500 once they complete their induction. Now, many people may feel uh, that this is some form of positive discrimination or as it's sometimes referred to as a reverse discrimination. Now, just to be clear, if someone ha is, is given some sort of incentive but they are just as qualified and just as suitable a candidate as everybody else, but they are given some kind of incentive um, to, to be recruited in a, a legitimate aim, then that is also covered under the Equality Act. And I'm going to explain that a little bit more now. But there is a danger, in my view, that this incentive may cross a threshold. And I, I will explain if you bear with me. So let's move to, first of all, a brief overview within the Equality Act. Part 5 talks about work and employment. So all sorts of uh, different sections and provisions about employees and applicants and then police officers, partners and partnerships, uh, the bar for uh, barristers. So that includes barristers chambers, for example office holders, qualifications, employment services, trade organizations, and so on and so forth. Uh, so there's a whole section that talks about work. That's part five. So bear that in mind when I come back to that in a moment. Um, but now moving to another section of the Equality Act. We're still within the Equality Act 2010, which remember sets out the protected characteristics and the governing of what is lawful or unlawful uh, discrimination uh, based within the Equality Act itself. Moving to section 159. This is describing positive action for recruitment and promotion. Now, just pausing to explain very briefly, positive action would be anything done, said, or incentivized, or any sort of scheme which is designed to encourage recruitment and promotion to more equally and more fairly balance a workforce, for example, based on any number of these protected characteristics. So, for example, if a particular community uh, wasn't accurately or fairly represented by um, 
the workforce of a particular company or particular organization and they had some sort of drive to balance that out that is what we're talking about by this positive action and this is set out in section 159 of the equality act broadly speaking if it's done properly then it is not unlawful discrimination as in not unlawful reverse discrimination um, if they are actively seeking out someone with one of those protected characteristics now this comes with a very a fairly specific description within this section but first of all the outline says part five remember we're talking about um, workforces does not prohibit a person described here from taking action within subsection three which we'll come to in a moment with the aim of enabling or encouraging persons who share the protect protected characteristic to overcome or minimize that disadvantage or to participate in that activity uh, section three of course is the action treating the person more favorably in connection with recruitment or promotion than another person uh, because the first person person a has the protected characteristic but b does not in english meaning that an action where one person is treated more favorably because they have one of these protected characteristics is not automatically discrimination against the other person that does not have that protected characteristic if it is done in the right way under this section now the important part here which is has been highlighted is under subsection 4 but it says subsection 2 only applies if person a the one with the protected characteristic is as qualified as b so the person with the protected characteristic is as qualified as the person without the protected characteristic to be recruited or promoted in the first place so going back to here if we are talking about um, teachers or student teachers or whatever this might be and whatever whatever incentive like this one is it designed to uh, to target they must be according to this as qualified to be recruited or promoted in the first instance so this is the first that's the first criterion second criterion that the person doing taking the action does not have a policy of treating persons who share the protected characteristic more favorably in connection with the recruitment or promotion than persons who do not share it and taking the action in question is a proportionate means of achieving the aim referred to in subsection 2. Remember subsection 2 being um, the actions taken with enabling and encouraging persons who share the protected characteristic to overcome the disadvantage and participate in the activity. So this whole actions described in subsection 2 is to make it fairer to overcome and minimize any disadvantage suffered because of a, dis a, a, a protected characteristic such as a disability or being from a particular uh, ethnic background to encourage them to participate in that activity. However, as I said in subsection 4, taking that action in question in a, is a proportionate means of achieving the aim referred to. A proportionate means of achieving that aim and that action to uh, minimize the disadvantage. But also the second of these criterion, the person does not have a policy of treating persons who share the protected characteristic more favorably in connection with recruitment or promotion than persons who do not share it. And then just to round this off somewhat, the recruitment be means a, proce a process for deciding whether to offer employment to a person, make contract work available, offer the person the permission as a partner in a proposed firm, a member in an LLP, um, offer a pupillage in the terms of a barrister's chambers, um, and, and various other things, personal office, appointment to public office, and so on, uh, and, and offer a person in service for finding employment. So that's what recruitment means for the purposes of this section. And so the takeaway point from this is that, first of all, they must be equally qualified. Secondly, there must not be a policy of treating them more favorably in connection with that recruitment or promotion and thirdly it must be proportionate therefore if we draw all of that together and this is just offering one viewpoint one possible viewpoint others may disagree with it and ultimately it would be for a court to determine for to make a, a definitive determination on whether or not this is lawful if we bring this back to this incentive scheme assuming that anyone applying is equally qualified 
so the first of those three criterion is met and then we move to look at the second two is someone being treated more favorably and is it a proportionate means now i'm sure there's a, a lot of uh, very intelligent heads have sat together uh, to discuss whether this is uh, proportionate and necessary and how this has all been set up the question remains for many people is whether or not this scheme is going to treat somebody more favorably because they share a particular characteristic, protected characteristic, such as um, having an ethnic background of black, Asian or minority ethnic applicants to the teaching profession. Now, please don't misunderstand me. All of these schemes to uh, increase uh, diversity and fairness and equality in the workplace I am absolutely all for and I fully support it may however be a question to uh, be answered as to whether or not this takes it one step outside of the spirit of what is permitted under section 159 and whether or not it is proportionate action and whether or not it amounts to uh, this person uh, taking the action amounting to a policy of treating persons who share a protected characteristic more favorably in connection with recruitment or promotion. That is very much a question mark uh, in my view. Um, this is not, I will declare, a specialist area of mine, but I do know how to read law uh, employment at the same time is not a specialist area of mine, which I fully declare. Uh, but again, I know how to read law. And for me, at the very least, um, this raises a question, which is probably better left for a definitive opinion to those more expert and more specialized than myself. Um, but I was asked to give my views on it. And my view is that it does raise a question mark as to whether or not this incentive goes beyond the bounds of what would be lawful under the Equality Act. Whether it's proportionate, uh, whether it amounts to treating somebody more favorably, uh, because after all, if someone is treated more favorably uh, because of a protected characteristic, and it's not a proportionate means um, it may, it may lead to difficulty. It may ultimately be unlawful. And just to go full circle to the beginning, remembering, of course, that if a candidate is employed who is not the best candidate and they are only employed because they share a protected characteristic, even if the underpinning motive is a positive one, then that may well be unlawful positive discrimination under the Equality Act. So those are my views, uh, not definitive views, you understand, it is just one one viewpoint of one barrister, and in my view it does raise this question. And so, as I say, I'm sure uh, many clever heads have got together to discuss this. Um, if they haven't discussed that particular element of it, I would think that is a necessary step to justify the position in the event that they come under uh, scrutiny and criticism. And uh, just to reiterate, um, I fully support drives for uh, an equal, uh, equally diverse and fair workplace and recruitment processes and procedures. Uh, so please keep the comment section respectful. And uh, in the meantime, if you have thoughts on this, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, please remember to like this video and subscribe. And as always, I thank you for watching.